Here is my former photo room. Sorry about the lighting, but this is stuff that I had when I was into photography and 35 millimeter slides and stuff like that. <clears throat> but what I want to show you is this here and I'm going to pull it out. Okay, I dug this out of that little photo closet that was in the apartment out in the front hall. I built this thing, I would say, in 1973. What it is, is a little realistic, I think it's a 10 watt per channel amplifier. I bought the amplifier in Radio Shack on the bargain table. I used to buy a lot of stuff that was defective and I'd fix it up. I don't remember what I paid for it, but it needed a power transformer. I couldn't get the right power transformer, so the one I put in here was not quite the same voltage, so there's not quite as much power output per channel as it would have been originally. What I did, I'm just got, I'm huffing here because I just come up the stairs with this damn thing. What I did is I um, built this. Now you're probably saying, what the hell is this thing? Well, I used to put slideshows on. I used to put slideshows on of vacations that I went to, like uh, Mammoth Cave, Kentucky, Gettysburg, um, all the sites all through Pennsylvania on my way to Wheeling, West Virginia, and I even put on WWVA Jamboree movies um, for movie film. Well, when I had my slideshow presentation, I use this amplifier and the controls on here serve a very important function. Now this is not my slide projector but this is one similar to what I had. I had the slide projector synchronized so that there was a narration and commentary for each slide and I did not have to speak into the microphone. There was a microphone that I had put on here so that I could add commentary if I wanted to. But the commentary was pre-recorded on a cassette. The left channel contained the information and even if I had some music to go with the slides, the right channel consisted of a pulse tone which went through here inside here I had a relay and the relay would turn on each time the tone came through and it would advance the slide on the slide projector. On the back of the slide projector you can see that little five pin connector here well, that's where the cable would plug in and it would advance the slide. So the only thing I had to do was make sure that the slide projector was in focus. I had pulse, so if I wanted to record a pulse, I'd push the button and it would record a pulse. If I wanted to cycle the slide projector manually, I'd just push this. If I wanted to reverse the slide, projector to go back to the previous slide I'd push this. All these functions as far as the slide advance and the reverse of course was done on the remote here but instead of having to handle the remote I had it all controlled here. I have a control here for playing or recording. When it was in the record mode it would generate the tone. I had a little oscillator in here that would generate the tone. And the volume, I have to use a magnifying glass, I can't see anymore. Uh, this is the main volume control here. I had a mixer control here. I had a projector, I could use tape or I could use the amp. So I had that function. And mic, slide and record right in here. 
And then, the, so basically, this is a regular amplifier. The right channel served as the pulse and operated a relay, and no music or commentary came through the right channel. All the commentary and music only came on the left channel. And I used a regular cassette deck. Not this one. It was a portable boombox, actually, with a line output, but something like that, with line level outputs on it. Looking at the back, and this is my digital camera, so I noticed when I did my record thing there that it uh, was not in focus. I, for some reason, this camera doesn't focus close in. So I'm looking at the uh, the video here, and with a magnifying glass on my viewfinder, it doesn't look like it's in focus. Hopefully, you can see it. Here's the auxiliary input. I had a two amp fuse and a looks like a five amp. 5 amps for the projector, 2 amps for the amplifier. Slide projector plugged in here. I have two unswitched outlets, two switched outlets, and this is for the speaker. The left channel. The left channel was for the music or commentary, and the right one was for the pulse, the wind set tape recorder. Depending on the switch position on the front, I could use this as a regular stereo amp, left and right, if I wanted to just play music only. So, this here was built out of half inch plywood, and on the bottom is an aluminum slide. I have a stand that I made to match this, so that this thing would set thing would sit, I don't know, hope you can see this, it would sit on an angle like this so you could use it. So it would sit just like this. So I was able to sit in the chair right next to it and have all controls in front of me. The stand for this I did not bring up, it's still in my photo closet. Now for the speaker system. This is the speaker system that I built for that. When I was doing a slide presentation, left and right channels were coming out of one side because the right channel was being used for the pulse. So it was a monaro. If I wanted to just play music, then I'd switch it over in here and the left and right channels would be stereo. Um, offhand, I think these are five inch high compliance Radio Shack woofers with the tweeters on the end. The speaker cable plugged in here, right into here. The backs are removable so I can service this. It's made out of half inch plywood, foam rubber, and uh, naga hide, I guess, or something like that that I had bought. Upon closer examination, you can see how I did this. and with the feet of course on the bottom handle on top I had these handles I got them surplus or something they're all metal very solid and as I said the back is with four screws accessible at the back to get out the uh, to do any service in there these boxes are sealed acoustic suspension with the uh, fiberglass and everything in them. I didn't do any damn formulas or any of that crap. I'm no good at it anyways. I just estimated the size of the speaker enclosure. These are separate. This chamber is completely separate from this. There, there's a plywood partition in between these. So these boxes are basically airtight. And uh, being that they're acoustic suspension, so this is basically what would happen. The movie screen would be up front, and this would sit on the floor right in front of the movie screen. And then I'd put on my presentation of the movies using my 8mm sound movie projector, which the sound would actually come through here. Uh, of course, they're not stereo. The 8mm films, and to my knowledge, when sound films were not stereo. But I could be mistaken. But anyways... It came through there and uh, piped the sound, uh, amplified the sound 
to a uh, line output uh, I hooked into the um, movie projector before the audio output stage and had a line level output which would connect to the line input of this amplifier. All this stuff with me, I loaded up the trunk of my 63 Ford Galaxy with all this uh, stuff and um, then I'd bring over these. These are my, when I was doing a slideshow, I'd do a combination slideshow and a uh, movie show. And I'd have an intermission too. I'd go through the whole nine yards here. Anyways, these are the Ecta Sound sound films only. And unfortunately, a lot of these films never got onto DVD because I don't have a good projector to transfer them and there's too much flicker. To have them professionally done is way out of my price range. I, you have to be a... Uh, you have to be rich to ha afford to have it done professionally. And then this one here was my um, silent films. Then of course I had the 400 footers. So I'd lug all, I'd have all this stuff, the 400 footers and uh, five trays of 100 each, 35 millimeter slides, and the slide projector. And um, I'll tell you, the stuff, the stuff I'd go to to try to entertain people. But after a while, you know, you know the old saying: people that get don't want to see somebody else's vacations. I try to make it into a presentation that would be like a travel thing, more than well. Bill went here, and this is what Bill saw. That's not how it went. It went to a history of it, like. Um, uh, Gettysburg when I went there I took some pictures and I read a little bit of the history and put it into the documentary on the tape and let that play too so and when I went to uh, Mammoth Cave Kentucky the same thing I'd have a little tape recorder and I went down there and as the tour guide was describing Mammoth Caves and the stuff that was down there and the stalactites and the stalagmites and all that I'd have it all on tape when I got home I put the show together it would take me about a month or sometimes longer to put on the slideshow to get it all together so that I can present it to, well, we're not done yet. Oh no. You thought that that's all I had to take with me? Mm-mm. One other item I used to haul around with me. This thing. <clears throat> it's sitting on top of my speaker so I can show it to you. And I'm going to show you a close-up of it. It's a box that I made. Here, I made this. This is a draw pull, and uh, in back of it is a, a took a hole saw and cut out some half-inch plywood to make a make a handle. And what this is is it would have two it would have a lever inside that a mechanism out of aluminum. I'll show you. Open it up. You see this little tongue coming up here? Well, she's all padded to protect the projector. So it's really made just for the projector, but you know what? It would probably be good for somebody in a band or something to put some stuff in it. But it's half-inch plywood, and um, it looks a brighter blue on the camera here than it really is. It's, the blue isn't quite that sharp and bright. But anyways, um, I used to have like... I, each compartment would have like a, spa a spare bulb that have the cords and things in here. You may ask if this stuff is for sale. Yes, it is. But I'm not going to ship it. I, I will not even consider that. So if you know anybody in the Connecticut area that, you know, if you're close by Connecticut, please PM me on the YouTube instant, uh, you know, personal message feature. And uh, we'll connect up. Anyways, um, that's it on, on this subject. So I'm going to back them out of here. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.